as Christians, the imagery of journeying together is actually very real, and that's what we do. Um, this service is based around the story of the, the journey of the, of the disciples with, with Jesus to, to Emmaus. The last few months has meant that it has been very difficult to journey together um, as our church buildings have been closed um, and as many places where we would meet, you know, don't happen anymore. We, I think, are very grateful for the wonders of technology that enables us to be here as a small group and yet also here with a lot of other people who will be watching, you know, who will be watching this and sharing this. And that is quite moving to realise that we are not just journeying together here, but we are journeying together, I think, probably across the world. I had a conversation with Josette yesterday uh, and we talked about trying to say something which is a little bit difficult and that is about money. <laughs> uh, and we are very aware that, that um, I mean, we don't normally do a, a, any collection at this service at all, um, but very aware that for, for across our churches, really, uh, finances are difficult. And, and here in the new room, of course, um, financially, it, it is difficult. Um, so if it is possible for you to make any, you know, any donation in whatever way um, to, to the new room, that would be very, very much appreciated. But we're here in this moment together um, to appreciate what it is to be journeying with God, to be journeying with Christ uh, as Christians together. And so we rejoice to be in this special place to worship God. We have traveled through times of suffering. We have known loss and grief, but we come now to give thanks for God's love and provision. And so we say together, and the words are on the screen, Jesus, our companion in life, you have given us ways to remember and celebrate you in story and symbol. May this be a holy time as you share your presence with us. May we be more fully aware of you walking with us and be open to the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God, trusting in his mercy and forgiveness. Holy and forgiving God, Forgive us when we have not followed the way of your Son, Jesus Christ. We are truly sorry for those times when we have despaired and turned away from your life-giving story. Take away all guilt, so that strengthened by your love, we may serve you more faithfully through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I want to read from Luke, um, Luke chapter 10, the end of chapter 10, beginning at verse 38. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into, a, into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. A very long time ago, back actually at the sort of autumn of, of 96, I was 19. And I worked for a while at the McFarlane Lang Cake and Biscuit Factory on the Great West, West Road, just going out of London. Um, I worked putting paper frills round McFarlane Lang Tunis cakes. Uh, 
they would the tunis cakes would come down from the the the, the, the bakehouse um, they would then have chocolate put on them. They would then go through a, a long kind of cooler. And then at the end of the cooler, they would come out and there would be a group of women who would put various rings of icing uh, around them and three marzipan fruits in the middle. They would then go down another cooler, this side, um, to where I stood with a, with a bag of, with, with a box of frills. Um, I would put a frill on and then they would go down to the, to the packers. Yeah, a bit further on. So I stood there with a box of frills. I'd get a frill, a bit of sellotape, the top, and put it round the and put it round the, round the cake, and then pick it up and put it down on on the conveyor belt. And I did that probably, probably just over a thousand a thousand times a, a day. I could just see the 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 factory clock in sort of over there. I could actually see it, and. And I worked, you know, I got in at eight and I finished at five. We had a break at, at, for a quarter of an hour in the morning, a break for three quarters of an hour at lunchtime and another quarter of an hour in the afternoon. And I was watching that clock go round. You know, it went from, you know, eight o'clock to what, about quarter past ten when we stopped it, you know, stopped for the break. And then for, you know, till about half past twelve when we, and I was, you know, watching the clock go. I then, I'd been there probably about, oh, I don't know, 10 days or so, when I realised that I was, I was wishing time away. That I was, I was just living, waiting for the, you know, the fingers of that clock to actually move. And that wasn't why I was there. And that was a lesson. That was a lesson for me. Time is a very funny thing. We live by linear time. You know, we, we begin, there's a middle and there's an end. I'm aware, I think, that for God, time isn't like that. God has, if you like, eternity. You know, the Christ who comes is the Christ who is there as the word at the beginning of creation. And the Christ who will be there, you know, at the end in eternity. There's something about time with God that, 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 that is timeless. And I think that's difficult for us to understand. Every year, Methodists go through uh, the covenant service. And there's a phrase in that wonderful, you know, sort of prayer that we do, which is, let me be employed for you, or let me be laid aside for you. Through the last few months, there have been people who have been working their socks off struggling to, to fit what they need to do into the hours that are there, working sometimes at very difficult and, and, and emotionally draining activities. And I think we've been very aware of that and what they are actually doing. But for a lot of people, the last few months have been, have been times of waiting. Times of being laid aside. And I think that has been hard. I was talking to a lady the other day uh, and she was saying that everything, almost everything that she did has been taken away from her. You know, she used to go into a school to, to you know, to hear the children read. Um, she used to organize coffee mornings for, you know, for Macmillan and, 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 and other charities. She was involved in, you know, doing all kinds of things for the, for the church community and all that has gone. The being laid aside. The waiting is, I think, sometimes, you know, the hard thing, the hard thing to do. That time at McFarlane Lang was part of, of two years. Um, at 19, I had actually decided that I would enter the ministry of the church. 
that, uh, uh, and then that was actually becoming what was part of the old deacon, what part of the old deaconess order. Um, the church hadn't, the Methodist church hadn't agreed to ordain women at that point. But I had to wait for, for, for two years to be 21 in order to go into college. And though, so I had a decision. Did I stay in education, which to be, to be fair, I wasn't doing, I wasn't being terribly good at. No, 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 that's fine. No, that was okay, okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, that I wasn't, that I wasn't terribly good at. Um, or did I go and do something else? Uh, and so I spent those two years doing all kinds of things. They were, in a sense, the waiting years. And the... Thank you. And, and they were, I have to say, two years that had a very profound, a very profound and, and significant uh, influence on me as a person. They changed me in many ways. I have a, a talk that, that I've done through the years as a minister um, about, uh, about those two years. And it's entitled, The Making of a Minister. And I have to say, it did make me um, a, a minister. It changed in many ways the person that I was and certainly deeply affected the ministry that I have shared through the years. So there is something about waiting that is significant for us. I want to do a little bot. Um, the story of, I've read the story of Mary and Martha, which is, is a very significant story because it says something very important about the way that Jesus treats women how he recognizes Mary, just as he recognized his male companions as, as disciples and treated her like that. And goodness knows the church has taken over 2000 years to actually, to actually rec to recognize that. So this story is a very significant story, but it does, it does belittle Martha a bit. And that worries me. The number of people who said to me, you know, when they've been busy doing something, well, well, I know that, you know, I should be a Mary, but, but really I'm, I'm a Martha. Um, and, and, and that, you know, they say that is difficult. Now I had an inspiration about that not very long ago. And that is if you actually look at the story of Mary and Martha, the story before it is the story of the Good Samaritan. And we all know how that story ends. You know, what does Jesus say to the rich young ruler? Go and do likewise. And I think that where those two stories are is deliberate. It is actually the balance between doing and being. And though the doing can be hard, I think sometimes the being is, is even harder. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. We are citizens, members of God's kingdom, called to do for him but called also to be. I want to use a short poem meditation. About, it's called The Patience of Waiting. Why aren't we moving? Oh, I've got better things to do than to stand here. What is taking so long? 
Oh, just get a move on, will you? Waiting is a game of patience that most of us have never learnt. Time is finite to be filled with the satisfaction of crossing off the list of things to do or with the purposeful distraction of a book, a crossword or exploring the social world of the internet at our fingertips. Not to be engaged in something we need or must or want to do. Just to be standing in a queue, sitting in a traffic jam, waiting for a bus that is late, takes away our sense of purpose and wastes our finite time. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Lord, teach us the patience of your time, the time of your kingdom. Amen. We now come to our prayers for those in need, and again, they are on the screen. And so we say together, we thank you, Jesus, for walking alongside us. Show us how to serve those whom we journey with in these times. Help us to live in your light and give us a longing to do your will. Enfold us all in your love and mercy. Wipe away the tears of failure, fear and distress and set us free to serve you. We say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. We tell the story of Jesus who was born on earth to bring the blessings of heaven into our lives, now and for all eternity. Jesus, you were present at the time of creation. Jesus, you bring God's healing ministry wherever you are present. Dying and rising, you share the gift of new life with all of us who seek to follow your way. You have called faithful followers such as Susanna, John and Charles Wesley to realign us to your values and truths. Help us to recognize those you have called in this time to bring the presence of Jesus into dark times and places. May we listen and learn and take part in your story. We praise you, Lord God, that our son, Jesus Christ, walks alongside us. You have given food for us in the wilderness. Stay with us and share yourself with us now, as you did with those two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Pour your Holy Spirit into our lives, that we may experience your healing and peace. May our eyes be opened and our hearts burn with other, within us as we recognize your presence. We pray for our city of Bristol and for those working to make it a safe and welcoming place for all. As we acknowledge injustice in the history of our city, we pray for new opportunities for wholeness and peace. In the calming, healing presence of Jesus walking alongside us, 
we offer our lives to follow him more closely, that we might like the dew to the thirsty and like blossom to those who need God's beauty. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord our God. His presence is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the sunshine, which warms the land, like the showers that water the earth and give us peace. And so the blessing of God, the creator, Jesus, the one who walks with us, and the Holy Spirit who guides us, rest and remain with us now and forever. Amen. Amen.